Hey guys, welcome to my, I guess, 29 and 30 week update. I'm 30 weeks. I usually film one vlog a week with my updates, so I was supposed to do my 29 week last week, but we went on vacation, I ran out of time, so now I'm 30 weeks, so I'm just gonna combine 29 weeks and 30 weeks together, so that's just what you get from me this week. So at 29 weeks, baby was the size of a butternut squash, which I don't really know what that is. I mean, I know, but I don't really eat it. Baby's bones were soaking up calcium and the respiratory system was still developing. Nothing really much happened last week, so you didn't really miss much. 30 weeks, which is what I am now, baby is the size of a large cabbage. Not just a regular cabbage, a large cabbage. I don't really eat much cabbage. It's saying that baby's skin is getting its color, has hair, a lot of hair on their head, and baby can open their eyes, which I think they've been able to do that, but it says they can see dim shapes, which there's probably not much they can see in my belly, but anyway, there you have it. How I'm feeling, large. <laughs> I feel huge. I'll give you guys a bump date. I, do these so randomly, I don't remember when the last one was, but I'll show you guys because I'm wearing a maternity shirt <clears throat> like I usually am. But here I am, 30 weeks, my belly is definitely bumping. It is poking out, it's huge. <laughs> so now you guys know why I feel large. My belly is huge. Tired, Anthony says I waddle everywhere. I don't walk very fast. It's hard for me to keep up with a lot of my family members because First of all, they're so tall, so like one stride for them is like five little steps for me, and then throw in pregnancy, and like, oh, I'm just so slow. Still a ton of back pain. I am using my belly band daily, and some days work better than others. I actually went online and ordered a new belly band because the Velcro on my current belly band is just not working anymore. I mean, it works half the time, but half the time it just like comes undone on its own. And it's just old, like it's five years old. So I ordered a new one. So that should be coming in a couple days. I'm very excited about that. Hopefully it helps. Sometimes I sit in my recliner. We have an electric recliner in our living room and I'll have it like lean back. And sometimes that helps, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know, it really just depends. Even like laying in bed, sometimes I can get comfy, sometimes I can't. Also, in addition to the back pain, I've been feeling pain like right here. It's like right under my left side rib. And I remember this happening in my previous pregnancies too. It is so tender, like even pushing on it. Oh, it hurts so bad. I really feel it like when I'm laughing, it just, oh, it hurts so bad. And so sometimes it feels good if I just put pressure on it. It's weird, like I don't know if I like tore or something, but I feel it every pregnancy. I don't know what it is, like muscle stretching or something. Not exactly sure, but yeah, that's been really annoying. And my back has been super annoying. Also super annoying is my heartburn. I have been getting it a lot more often now, which makes sense because I'm getting towards the end of my pregnancy every evening. As soon as I put the kids down, and I go downstairs, so it's about eight o'clock. I just have heartburn the rest of the night. Usually if I take Tums, it will help, which is nice. I used to be able to ignore it in the past, and now I cannot. And it's especially apparent when I'm laying down in bed, that's when the heartburn is the worst. And so I usually cannot ignore it then, and I have to go and take some Tums. So thankfully there is Tums out in the world, and they do help. Baby is still being very active. She has been getting hiccups so much lately. I was like, am I ever gonna feel her have hiccups? Now I feel them all the time. She gets them multiple times a day and I always feel them so low. I swear, she sits so low um, in my uterus. I feel her. I swear she's gonna like fall out. So I feel her all the time. She kicks all the time. She goes crazy in the evenings. That's when she's most active because I'm finally sitting down after chasing the kids all day, every day. Yeah, it's awesome to feel her. Anthony feels her all the time because she's constantly moving. So 
that's really fun to be able to feel baby, know that she's okay, she's very active, so that's fun. I have noticed myself getting very tired. I think I talked about that earlier, but like tired like every day around this time, midday, like I just find my eyelids are like, I can't keep them open. Even after I've just had a cup of coffee, like literally an hour ago, and I'm laying there like wanting to fall asleep and close my eyes. I usually cannot make it through the night anymore without having to get up and pee at least once. Usually it's only once, sometimes it is twice, but usually it's just once. If I'm really, really tired, I can make it through the night. That happens maybe like once a week. But other than that, it's like I cannot make it without peeing. I pee all the time now, multiple times, all the time. I'm very thirsty, I drink a lot, headaches are here and there. I have been taking Tylenol when I need to every couple days, usually is what it seems like. I can feel that I'm getting like out of breath. My heart has been beating really fast after I do like very menial tasks. So definitely like having a harder time breathing, feeling fatigued a lot easier, just all the symptoms of getting closer to the end of pregnancy. I never updated you guys, but I had my most recent doctor's appointment. It was I was gonna talk about my 29 week update and then I never ended up having it. So I guess I'll just talk about it here. I went a week and a half ago to the doctor's office and it was a really, oh no, this was actually a really long appointment. I forgot about it. It's been so long and I've already been forgetting about it. This was my glucose test appointment, which I made a little vlog about it. So go watch that if you want to, but 45 minutes before my appointment, I had to drink my glucose drink. I chose the fruit punch. They had the orange, the fruit punch, and the lime. I've done the orange and the lime before, so I wanted to try the fruit punch just to say I've tried them all. And I wanna say the fruit punch was my least favorite. It just wasn't that great. Like it was fine and I didn't have any trouble drinking it, but it just, it wasn't as tasty as the other ones. So I wasn't very impressed by it, but it was fine. I feel like a lot of people get dramatic about the glucose test and I never have any issues with it. So I drank it within the five minutes. Mine said like five to 10 minutes. I didn't have to fast or anything. I know everybody's doctor is different. Um, so that was nice. And so I took the, the drink and then I went for my appointment, told them when I had finished drinking because they have to draw your blood an hour after. They took my weight and my blood pressure. Blood pressure was good. I wasn't sure how I was gonna do because my heart has been racing lately, but I guess my blood pressure has been doing fine. And my weight, I've been gaining. I've been gaining a lot of weight. Even though I'm like, I feel like I barely eat. I probably haven't gained very much. Oh no, I gain weight every time. <laughs> Mind you, I get on the scale and I have like my shoes on and my coat on and you know, everything else, but still, I am gaining a lot of weight. Not good. I mean, good, but not cool. And then they uh, waited for the hour and then they drew my blood. They drew a ton of vials of it because not only are they checking your glucose and if you're processing sugar, but they also check on all your other blood levels just to make sure everything is looking fine. So like your red blood cells, white blood cells, whatever else it is that they're checking. And they told me no news is good news. So if I don't hear from them, then that means I passed. The only reason they'll call me is if I failed. With my first two pregnancies, I passed both times. So I was feeling like, oh yeah, I'm probably gonna be fine. Then I waited for my doctor to come. She asked me how I was doing and I told her I just felt huge and tired. <laughs> She's always like, do you have any questions? And I'm always like, no, because I just have such easy, simple pregnancies. She measured my belly. I'm measuring on track, even though I feel huge every week. And then she got the Doppler out, found baby right away. She asked me if baby was kicking and I was like, yes, baby kicks all the time, constantly. And baby's heartbeat was in the 160s. So it was like the highest it's ever been because usually she's like in the 150s. But my boys have always been in like the 160s. So she said everything was looking great. And she asked me if I wanted to get the Tdap shot. And I said yes, which protects baby from whooping cough. I think you're supposed to get it once every 10 years or something. I think it's kind of like tetanus. 
but they really recommend moms get it when they're pregnant because then the whooping cough antibodies will pass over to the baby through the shot through the mom. I get it with all my pregnancies, um, but it's up to each mom if they want to do that or not. So I said yes, and then I also asked her about the Rogam shot because they didn't bring it up, but I have negative blood. I'm A negative, and if you have a negative blood type, you have to get the Rogam shot. You have to get it at least once before you deliver, and then if your baby has a different blood type than you, so like I'm A negative, if my baby was positive, whatever, then I would have to get another Rogam shot. With Grayson, he's AB positive, so he I had to get the Rogam shot after him, after I had him. Porter, he's A negative, just like me, so I didn't have to get a second Rogam shot. So it just kind of depends on what your baby has. Rogam shots help because because of my negative blood type. I don't I don't really know the science behind it. You'll have to Google it, but it's like if you don't get this Rogam shot, then your body will attack future pregnancies, thinking it's something bad, a foreign something, and so by getting this Rogam shot, your body doesn't attack future babies. Something kind of like that. I'm probably explaining it horribly, but anyway, so they said yes, you get that too. So I just felt poked all day. I got the blood taken out of my arm, like three or four vials of it, and then they poked me one in each arm, one with the Rogam shot and then one with the Tdap shot. So. That was not fun, but very necessary that I got those things. So I was happy with that. And then that was it. And I thought maybe I would start going every two weeks, but they told me, no, I have one more appointment four weeks out. And then I start going every two weeks, which honestly makes sense because I mean, my pregnancy is so like chill and easy anyway. Like why would I need be going sooner? There's really no point. So I made my next appointment for 32 weeks. It is the day before Valentine's Day. And that should be a super quick appointment because I'm not getting like shots or blood or anything like that. They're just gonna get weight, blood pressure, pee in a cup, which I did that, I forgot to say. That's just a given, I do that every time. And measure belly, listen to baby, and that's it. So it'll be a very, routine appointment but overall that appointment went good but i was there usually my appointments go super fast like i'm in and out in like i don't know 15 20 minutes that one i was there for about an hour just with all the things going on had to wait for my blood draw they were super busy i went on martin luther king day so i think a lot of people scheduled for that day because they had off of work and so the usually when i go in the waiting room is like dead because i come in like right after lunch nobody's there this time I went and it was packed. There were so many people there. So it just took a little longer, but it was fine. But yeah, other than that, the appointment went well. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else with me. I have not, I've been noticing that I've not been losing hair. I know as soon as baby comes, all my hair is gonna fall out. I'm actually going to schedule a haircut for myself. Um, just to try to get like a jump start on me losing all my hair. So I'm gonna cut up. I asked for a couple inches off. Um, I asked for my hair to be thinned because I have such thick hair. And then I also do long layers that kind of like frame my face. So my plan is to get that done in like March, right before the baby comes. Because I always have this where I don't get a haircut beforehand. I think my hair is fine. And then I start breastfeeding baby. And then my hair is like always in the way and it annoys the heck out of me. So I'm gonna try and be like preemptive this time and get my hair cut. I'm not gonna get it dyed or anything like that, just a simple trim. So I do have that planned. This weekend, we're gonna do some rearranging of rooms to try to just get prepared for baby. We're gonna move beds. Eventually, we're gonna kick my youngest out of the crib, not right away, but once baby outgrows the bassinet, then she'll go in the crib and then my son will go into a big boy bed. And then we're gonna put my oldest in, uh, <laughs> shockingly, in a queen bed, which just feels huge to me. That way we can make it a guest room if need be and then we can bunk the boys up, whatever. So we're gonna do all that. We need to go car shopping soon. Hopefully we can do that in the next couple weeks. I gotta get all the stuff out of the crawl space and start like 
going through my breastfeeding supplies, see if I need anything more of that. I'm just getting out like the swing, the bassinet, just like stuff like that. Like February is less than a week away. And so it just seems like time is moving so fast. I'm getting towards the end of my pregnancy. I have like 10 or less weeks to go. So I'm just trying to get things done because I really haven't done anything for baby. I still need to like buy a bunch of stuff for her nursery. Yeah, I don't know, their child problems. I just haven't done that much like preparing. Probably not good. That's why we're gonna do some stuff this weekend. So I'll probably do a vlog about it or something. So stay tuned for all that. But any more symptoms with me? I still have like bumps all over my legs. Don't really know where they're coming from. I'm assuming it's pregnancy related. They don't itch. So I think like maybe it's just acne. I don't know. Those are all over my thighs still. I still get the tingling sensation in my nose once a day, every day, which is super annoying. Also, every morning my nose is super congested. I blow it once and then I'm fine the rest of the day. So I'm still dealing with that. Pregnancy is just so glamorous. <laughs> I'm really not having cravings. I've had like zero cravings this pregnancy, which is just kind of crazy because I, I usually don't have that many cravings, but I feel like at least with my first two, I had some type of craving. Like I remember with my oldest, it was mac and cheese and root beer. And then with my second pregnancy, I guess I don't really remember what it was, but it, it was something. And this one, I really don't, I don't know, I really haven't been craving anything. Well, it's kind of the same to me. In fact, I find I, I, it's hard for me to eat dinner because I just, I get a little nauseous in the evenings. And so, yeah, that's not been super fun. I guess I'm just rambling. So I think that'll probably be it for these, these two weeks, 29 and 30 weeks. Hopefully from now on I can continue just doing the weekly updates. I do have another trip coming up, so maybe I'll have to combine a week or two. But for now, I think I should be able to do weekly. Um, Anthony and I did kind of take a baby moon, I guess, if you want to call it. But it wasn't just us two. We went with all my siblings. We did like a sibling vacation. And we went to Florida, hung out for a couple days. Um, so that was kind of nice to do like a getaway. One last vacation of Anthony and I before the baby comes. I am going to Disney with my two kids in about a month. And that will truly be the last trip I take before a baby comes. So I do have one more trip coming up. But other than that, I'm just staying home, taking it easy, trying not to get too stressed. Oh, pregnancy insomnia. Definitely been still having pregnancy insomnia. If I wake up in the middle of the night, it's very hard for me to go back to sleep. Didn't want to forget that, which is probably why I'm so tired all the time. Yeah, I'm just trying to stay calm, trying not to be too anxious. I get anxious very easily, and so I'm trying to just stay calm be zen, which is not easy for me to do. So, Anyway, I'm rambling. I'm gonna close this out. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any questions down below. I would love to answer them for you. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.